Hi guys, yeah, and welcome to another video. Um, I don't suppose you're going to find this one very popular, but I do hope you watch it because you'll upset me. Because I only try and teach you things that I personally find useful, and I always like to, every now and again, explain why I tell you to do the things that I do tell you to do. And... When we're over in the likes of raw therapy, uh, which seems strange because I'm over here in Photoshop, um, I've shown you in previous videos over the last few weeks the value of the LAB adjustment panel in raw therapy. And we've also looked at the HSV equaliser in raw therapy and various other things where I've actually said that we're working in an LAB version of the image in the raw workflow inside a raw therapy. And, you know, I mean, up to a point, Lightroom does it as well. But fundamentally, what I want to do today is explain to you the reason why LAB and all these different LAB style color models are so useful. Um, and in particular LAB, because I've had quite a few interesting conversations with um, YouTube subscribers over the last few months or so, where they asked me why they never see me using LAB in Photoshop. And I, I don't use LAB in Photoshop, I never, never have, or not really, uh, for the simple reason that I believe Photoshop if you go back to a couple of videos ago where I was talking about qualitative and quantitative adjustments, I actually believe Photoshop is where we do all our qualitative adjustments. In other words, the adjustments that make the image look prettier and more acceptable to the human eye. Whereas when we're working in a raw developer and we're actually processing or doing advanced processing on the actual physical raw file itself, what we're actually doing are quantitative adjustments. And I've always believed that LAB is more viable, if you like, or handier to use as a quantitative adjustment rather than a qualitative adjustment. But here we are inside of Photoshop, and I'm going to explain the difference, or the fundamental difference, between RGB, which is what we're all used to, and you all work with RGB images, because the RGB colour space, or the RGB colour model, I should say, is basically the industry standard um, colour space or colour model for the distribution and the usage of digital images. Yes, be they from raw files, or they are scans from film. But RGB has its limitations, and as I said, we're going to be working over here in Photoshop, and I just want to show you why LAB and its derivatives are so handy. And we'll start off with this RGB image of this little red squirrel, and you can see over here, I've got the, um, Christine Dukins, right? Lord knows. I um, don't know what that is. But we've got this open with the channels panel on display. And you can see we've got a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. And if I come over to Photoshop Preferences and I go to Interface, you can do this if you want, but for God's sake, if you do, make sure you go and undo it first, otherwise you'll get yourself in a world of trouble. But we've got this option here to show channels in colour. Alrighty. So, here we've got the red channel. Mmm, yes. This is actually what the red channel looks like. And all you can see is it's, it's got no grayscale. It has no grayscale. Uh, fundamentally, it's black to primary red 255. Similarly with the green channel, it's black to primary green 255. And the blue channel, which always looks really blooming dark, because blue is the predominantly the darkest colour of the three primary RGB colours. 
and this just runs from black to primary blue in the highlight. So there is no fundamental grayscale. So when we want to do an adjustment to an RGB image, and let's say we just go and put a curbs layer on it, da -dum, pull up a curb and let's put a contrast enhancing curve on there. Bit massive, yes, I <laughs> know, but well, there you go. Um, I mean, if we go over to layers, you can see that curves adjustment there. And what it's actually done is not only increase the contrast in the image, but if we go back over to channels, you'll notice that the red channel has actually gone darker, as has the green channel, like that. And as has the blue channel, which has now gone even darker than it was before. And just to prove the point, if we turn that off, now you'll see there's a bit of a jump in lightness to the blue channel. If we come back to the red channel, that's what, the one that will most likely show it up best. we we'll go to the red channel, go back to layers and turn this curves off. Yeah, turn it back on again. So by adding a curves or it could be a levels adjustment working inside the rgb color model any luminance adjustment which is fundamentally what a curves layer a curves adjustment is or a levels adjustment we're actually affecting color and the way we get around it is to actually put the adjustment layer into the luminosity blend mode but it doesn't really get us around the problem it does adjust the colors to a certain degree if i just go and highlight the red channel again and then come back to layers if i turn this curves layer off it still makes a bit of a difference even though it's in the luminosity blend mode so you you really do struggle in an rgb color model image to actually create luminosity adjustments that only affect luminosity and don't affect color so if i turn this curves layer off or dump it so now we're back to our original rgb image and what i'm going to do is go to image and i'm going to go duplicate Alrighty, this is where the fun starts. And I'm going to go to image, mode, come here. And I'm going to switch it out to lab color. Now, yeah, you saw a bit of a flicker there, but there's no difference between the RGB image and the lab color space image. No difference at all visually, none. However, if we go to the channels panel, we haven't got red, green, and blue now. We have the lightness channel or the L channel. That's very valuable because on the A and B channels, we have all our color information. Yeah, doesn't that look really riveting? Hmm. But you see the LAB color model and the CIE XYY color model and the CIE XYZ. And to up to a point, the HSV and the HSL color models dial in on the lightness and separate or give us the ability to separate lightness from color so we can make adjustments to the lightness channel without having any effect on color. Let me just show you. So if I turn this lightness channel back on and then I duplicate the image again, just like that. So now I've got a second version. If I go to the adjustments panel and I put on, say, a levels adjustment and I bring in the black point and I bring in the white point, all right, so now I'm really ramping up the contrast and then I move the midpoint over towards the darks to make it go lighter. Yeah, right, now then. We've made a luminosity adjustment or a lightness adjustment. 
Now, if we'd have done that on an RGB image, we would have fundamentally changed the look of the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. So not only would we have affected the grayscale of the image, we would also have affected the colour. But over here in lab, you can see we've made an adjustment to the lightness because if we go back to our original one and just look at the lightness, and that is the one without the adjustment, you can see we've made a heck of a change. However, if I go and turn the colour channels back on and turn the lightness off, there's the colour of the levels adjusted image. And if we go back over to the unadjusted image, there's the two A and B channels representing all the colour in our unadjusted image. So this is the colour of our unadjusted image. And this is the colour of our adjusted image. There is no difference. So this levels adjustment, or we could have put a curves adjustment on or anything, is only affecting the lightness channel. Now, this is fundamentally why when we go over to raw therapy, we are able to work in lab and separate out lightness from colour. Alrighty, now then. Where else does this sort of process come into operation? Well, firstly, when we come to capture sharpening. And the capture sharpening is actually the same sort of sharpening as we've got in the details panel under the sharpening tab if we go to RL deconvolution. This is Richardson Lucy deconvolution sharpening, which doesn't really sharpen edges at all. It's actually not sharpening conceptually. It's not sharpening, but Gaussian blur removal. And so anybody who's bought my sharpening course will have had a complete full explanation of RLD convolution and Gaussian blur removal as a concept and how to do it in practice inside a rural therapy. However, this RLD convolution sharpening here, yeah, is not the same. Well, it is the same, but it's not done in the same way as the capture sharpening over inside the raw tab. Because the capture sharpening here isn't done on the L channel. And this is the one thing you've got to remember about this L channel. Because this lightness channel in LAB is perceptual. Because the LAB colour model is basically or was basically created way, way many moons ago on how human beings perceive light and colour in a scene. Whereas over inside of their uh, raw therapies, raw capture sharpening, it's actually done on the Y channel of the XYZ or XYY colour space or colour model. I can't remember which one it is. I've no doubt somebody like Ingo will actually forward that bit of information to me. But the XYZ and the XYY colour models are not strictly perceptual. They are more linear. And so... What we're doing is by using the Y channel out of that color model for capture sharpening, what we're actually doing is we are using a linear lightness channel, but it still works just on lightness and nothing to do with color at all. You've also seen me demonstrate the HSV equalizer in a previous video. And that's on the playlist for raw therapy. And uh, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Now, that uses the HSV colour model where V is lightness. So we can control separately hue, saturation and V value, which is lightness. And we can separate out V value, vis-a-vis lightness, from colour and hue. 
However, the one thing is that I know everybody wants me to do a tutorial on it, and <laughs> I will do at some time, but what I'm just going to do is hop over into the new RAW, if you like, RAW Therapy 5.9 dev build, which I've got running inside of Linux, inside of VirtualBox on my Mac. So we'll just hop over to there. And here we are. And we're in the new, or not new yet, <laughs> the coming soon Wavelet panel, which I'll, I'll hold my hands up now. Um, it's still under a bit of construction, and uh, it's taking the developers a little bit of time to explain it all to me. But fundamentally, the Wavelet operation, or the Wavelet processing operation, inside of uh, Rural Therapy, even inside the current public release 5.8 version, works in LAB, and it works on the L channel of LAB. And to prove the power of it, here's the image as we import it from the camera as a raw file, straight into raw therapy, and pretty much solely working inside the wavelet panel, we end up with that. Okay. So the tutorial uh, for wavelets or advanced wavelet processing mm, is yet to come. We haven't see, even contemplated starting that yet. Um, but anyway, all I'm trying to do is here explain to you why it is that we find, or I recommend, using these other than RGB color model options inside a raw therapy because they allow you to make some very 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 targeted quantity adjustments to give you a really good quality image to scoot over into the likes of photoshop or another raster image processor as an rgb color model image where you can then go and apply all the qualitative adjustments to make your image look prettier and more acceptable to the human eye. So there you go, folks. Yeah, it's not revealing anything revolutionary to you, I don't think, apart from maybe uh, this upcoming version of uh, raw therapy and uh, some of the potential inside it. And uh, yeah, that will come. But really and truly, the explanation that I've just given, maybe it's a bit, little bit long-winded, I don't know. But you should be able to see why these color model adjustments on the raw file in color models that allow you to separate color from lightness it enables you to see why they are so damned valuable to the processing of your raw files so there you go guys and gals i hope you've got something useful out of this video i don't think it's been too long which is a bit of a new one for me Although I bet it's 20 minutes, isn't it? So maybe it's not a short one. And anyway, but if you've liked it, give it a thumbs up. Please leave a comment below. Please, please, please give me some requests for some content that you actually want to see on this channel. Please. Right? It's desperately needed. Yes, this is my channel. But for all you lovely subscribers, because I know there's, uh, there's over 2,000 of you now, and I'm eternally grateful to you, um, but it's your channel as well, so please tell me what you want me to do, and I'll do it. All righty. As I said, give it a thumbs up if you like it. If you don't like it, feel free to give it a thumbs down, but well, there you go. And uh, Leave a comment below. Uh, share it with your friends. And um, yeah, until the next time, guys and gals, keep taking the pictures. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you very, very soon, I promise. Toot root.